Thank you very much, AJ. So uh, clinical effectiveness of routine care for stroke prevention. What do the trials show? The trials clearly show that aspirin is superior to placebo for stroke prevention and warfarin superior to aspirin and also superior to aspirin plus clopidogrel. They also show that non-vitamin K oral antagonists are superior or similar to warfarin for stroke prevention and have less intracranial bleeding. What's unknown is whether the restricted trial populations reflect the wider world. So do they reflect the wider world? And are the data supported by the findings from large observational studies? And what are the one-year outcomes? And obviously, in observational data, we have a challenge. Because in any observational data, there may be variation in the baseline characteristics as the reason why particular therapies are chosen. So we have to find a way to deal with that. And what are the findings in higher or lower stro uh, stroke risk patients and the impact of adding aspirin? Now, here's a scary thing. Should we add aspirin to an anticoagulant? You know, in cardiology, we are pretty familiar with ad adding aspirin to things. And um, obviously, it's going to be better, isn't it? Well, we'll have to see. So how are we going to do this? There's a process called overlap propensity score weighting. This may sound newfangled. It isn't. It's 35 years old. It's a well-established technique. And what it says is people who have particular risks or comorbidities, they don't travel alone. They travel with other comorbidities. So you need to find a way to adjust for, in this case, 40 covariates that all influence the baseline characteristics and then undertake the matching. So let's, first of all, do a reality check to see whether this large population reflects what we know from the trial data. So this is oral anticoagulant versus no oral anticoagulant in lower or higher risk patients, and the freedom from all-cause mortality. So this is not all-cause mortality, it's freedom from all-cause mortality. So on the left, what you see is that the, the, uh, the curves are separated, but there is only a minor trend not reaching statistical significance. On the right, for those with a higher CHADS-VASC score of two or more, the curves are well separated and highly significant. So this is consistent with what we know from the data, but raises a little alarm bell about the lower risk population. Now let's look at the freedom from stroke and systemic embolism. And this is for the population with a CHADS-VASC score of two or more. And what we can see is that there is a highly significant reduction in favor of some form of oral anticoagulation um, versus a no oral anticoagulation. So that, again, is a plausibility test. It's highly consistent with what we would anticipate. What about freedom from major bleeding? So this is for the patients, again, the higher risk population of patients where there was gain. And what we see is what we might have predicted from the randomized trials. Clearly, there is a lesser chance that one is free of major bleeding with an anticoagulant versus not. So the reality checks uh, fit together. Now let's look at the issue of the non-vitamin K oral anti-antagonist uh, uh, anti against a VKA in lower and higher risk patients. And there's a key message. And the message is that the higher risk patients, there is a highly significant reduction um, in all-cause mortality in favor of the uh, NOAC. And I stress, this is having adjusted with very detailed propensity weighting for all of the 40 cofactors that may be influential. However, however, 
in the low-risk patients, we were not able to show a difference. So what about the issue of NOAC versus VKA and stroke and systemic embolism for the higher risk patients, CHADS, VAS, school, uh, two or more? There is a trend in favor of the NOAC not reaching conventional uh, significance, again consistent with some of the pooled data from trials. Freedom from major bleeding, then they're similar. Uh, in fact, slightly higher rates of bleeding uh, amongst the VKA treated than the NOAC treated. So let's look at the summary of this. This is the hazard ratio for the treatment comparisons. All cause mortality, all anticoagulant versus none, highly significant result. NOAC versus VKA uh, for the higher risk people, significant result and a strong um, indicator for all anti-antagonist anti against none in stroke systemic embolism and a trend for NOAC VKA. And the, the differences in major bleeding are seen below. However, in the low stroke risk patients, there is only a trend, not significant, in terms of all-cause mortality. Now, what about the antiplatelets? I said that we would look at these. All-cause mortality, what we see is antiplatelets have a strong trend for benefit versus no treatment. However, all antagonists are clearly better. Similarly, pre prevention of stroke and systemic embolism and stroke alone. So all antagonists work compared to aspirin in those three settings. What about safety? What we see is, as we would anticipate, that there is lower rates or trends for lower rates among the aspirin compared to the oral antagonist, but for any, uh, clearly significant for any bleeding. And you can see the trends are non-significant for some of the other comparisons. Now let's look at the um, efficacy in the high-risk patients for antiplatelets. And we can see that, again, the aspirin versus oral antagonist, the oral antagonist uh, anticoagulant is more effective and for stroke systemic embolism and for stroke alone. Looking at safety, we see a trend that shows a trend that the aspirin treated tend to have lower bleeding and significant for the comparison of aspirin versus oral anti uh, antagonist. So how can we put this together? Based on the one-year data, the oral antagonist um, versus none shows clear mortality and stroke systemic embolism advantages, especially on those, in those with a high CHADS-VASC score. That's important because this is a sense check against what we know from the randomized trials. And the oral antagonist is superior to antiplatelet therapy, particularly for mortality and stroke, and causes similar rates of major and critical bleeding. I've not shown you all of that. The NOACs are superior to VKA for mortality in high-risk patients. So these are uh, CHADS, VASC, two or more. And the NOAC versus VKA show a trend for superior protection against stroke systemic embolism. And the rates of bleeding, especially in those uh, with a high CHADS VASC, also trends for superiority. But these are not independently uh, significant. So what does this tell us? This tells us that we can look at a very broad population across many countries uh, that include patients that have n um, would otherwise not get into clinical trials because these are the people that have all the comorbidities and all the variations that we see in the different trials. There is sense in the data in that it fits with the key uh, comparisons of the all antagonists versus none or antiplatelets uh, anti versus all antagonists. And there's new information that perhaps adding antiplatelets may be hazardous. So thank you very much.